Hello everybody, my name is Julie Mann. I am a professional network marketer, I'm an actor, and I'm also an EFT practitioner. And today I'm joined by dancer and teacher, Bonnie Wallace. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, hi, Julie. Great to see you. Nice to see you. I, I was looking you. at your, your website today and you say that, that dance is really in your DNA. I think so when is. was it that you, you know, what age were you when you realized that that was so? Well, I think I realized that relatively recently when I was an adult, I realized it was in my DNA, but I realized that because I was dancing when I was in kindergarten and maybe even preschool. And so, uh, uh, well, my mom likes to tell this story of how my very first recital when literally I was maybe in preschool or kindergarten and usually the teacher is in front of the students during the recital when they're really little but in this case I was the one in front and I mean I didn't think anything of it but the teacher put me in front for the recital to lead the kids in doing whatever it was we were doing so, you know, I've been dancing all my life. It, it, it comes fairly, you know, easy for me, I guess. And um, it's something I love. So, so, so I think it's in my DNA. Fabulous. I think so. So the career of a dancer can be uncertain, can't it? Not only, you know, it's the, the discipline of dancing, um, but also in terms of work, you know, that's not, you know, there's not work necessarily all of the time. So, so what was, what was it like for you having a career as a dancer? You've got to find your own work, right? You've got to be out there and you've got to supplement. So it's, it's sort of the job, like an actor or an actress, right? You're waiting tables. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've been sort of fortunate because it wasn't, oh, it, it didn't become, I didn't have to rely on it in terms of eating my next meal. So it was something that I could enjoy and do. And I had other things going to always uh, supplement that work. Um, and I was able to, to make it happen for myself. I was able to, and, and then I started teaching after being in a, in a company and, um, you know, it worked out for, for, for me personally. Brilliant. So, so what had you decide to go from dancing as a career to teaching as a career? Well, there's more opportunities in teaching, isn't there? Um, and it turns out I love to teach. I love to share what I do with other people. Um, and as a teacher, I get to make the rules and that's always fun. So I don't have to do other people's choreography or uh, do what they tell me to do, other people's exercises, and I don't have to be quiet and sit at my desk or whatever it is, you know. Um, so I get to make the, the rules and, and that's kind of nice. But I've learned, so I've had some great teachers who've, who've taught me amazing content and exercises and techniques. So I'm, I'm lucky there too. So but how just, was it then dealing with other people's rules, Bonnie? Well, <laughs> if I didn't like them, I wasn't there long. Um, which is why in my class now, in the classes that I teach now, I have a blend of all sorts of modalities. So when it comes to dance and jazz and ballet technique, I try to stick to the basics, but I never want, I, I, I would always get bored in a ballet class, like an hour and a half ballet class. Just, I couldn't deal with it and I couldn't deal with all the precision. And, and it was just, she would, you know, the teacher would tell you what to do and we'd stand there for five minutes while she'd tell you what to do and then you would do it for five minutes and then she'd tell you again for five minutes what to do and then you would do it. And I hated that. Um, and I also took yoga for stretching and flexibility, and I enjoyed yoga very much. But again, like an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes of yoga, was I was bored out of my gourd. I think I have ADD. And um, 
And then cardio, like I like cardio, but sometimes I've gone to classes where it's just like way too athletic for me, you know. Uh, they're just jumping all, all over the place. They're on the floor. They're up the floor. They're, they're jumping, jumping, jumping. And, and, and that didn't work for me. So as my own teacher, I get to incorporate all the, those wonderful things in my time and in a short amount of time, right? So I do a little bit of yoga, I do a little bit of cardio, I do a little bit of muscle strengthening. And of course, I always have the ballet and jazz technique going. Wonderful. <laughs> perfect blend. It's the perfect blend. Fabulous. So in, in going from working for other people to setting up your own business, I mean, that has challenges in itself, doesn't it? So what are some of the oh, biggest yeah. challenges that you've had having a dance business, um, and how have you worked through those challenges, Money? You know, the biggest challenge for me is uh, getting the word out and getting the customers. Um, and uh, word of mouth is my best method of that. I think that that's a fairly common practice. Um, but also, this idea that like you have to make everybody happy you you know people people will say oh i can't be there at nine o'clock in the morning i just i just can't be at the studio at nine o'clock in the morning blah 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 and my mind is thinking okay should i should i do it in the evening should I, you know trying to make it work for everybody else and i kind of stopped doing that <laughs> but that took a little bit of time um so I, uh, but that's been the biggest challenge, of course, is just getting, spreading the news and getting word of mouth and, and hopefully people will uh, be able to fit it into their schedule on, on uh, you know, and now, of course, everything is on Zoom, given the pandemic. So you're doing your classes on Zoom? I'm doing my classes on Zoom. And there's a lot of benefits with that, right? It's, it's, it's convenient. Everybody can do it from home. You don't have to schlep to the dance studio. On the other hand, you don't have the same experience. You don't have the same energy. You don't have that same feeling of dancing together. And it's a little bit harder to pick up some of the choreography and some of the technique and to follow along. So, so there's, there's, pros and cons to everything. But on Zoom, I'm getting people from, I have a student, and now I'm in California. I have a regular student who Zooms in from Oregon, which is the state north of California. And I have a regular student who Zooms in from India. Wow. And she she's 12 and a half hours ahead of us. So my class is at 9 a.m. and she Zooms in at 9.30 p.m. Incredible. And she's committed. And so, you know, of course, if I was teaching in the studio, she would never be able to come. That's brilliant. I know that you have two children, both of which are teenagers now, aren't they? Yes. But you actually homeschooled them, didn't you? What made you choose to do that? To not go to the yeah, coach? Yeah, I homeschooled my, my kids uh, from, you know, kinder, kindergarten through ninth grade. Well, through through eight or nine and a half grade. Um, we live in Southern California. I wasn't happy with the public schools and the private schools were a little too pricey. And I started researching homeschooling because I would go to the park when my son was a baby and I asked parents, what are you doing for school? And many told me they were homeschooling. And I was homeschooling, let me check that out. And so I would go back to the computer, Google homeschooling, and I found a woman by the name of Charlotte Mason, who actually is from England around the turn of the 18th, the 19th century, you know, early 1900s, uh, late 1800s. And she started this whole approach of, um, you know, real, real, it's almost like Montessori, but she gave the kids real literature. She didn't boil anything down. She didn't dumb anything down. And I just liked her approach so much. I got really into the whole Charlotte Mason thing. And so I, I said, you know, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. And we started 
I also did a, a very thematic approach with my kids. So each year we would pick a different piece of literature and use that as the theme. So the first year when, when my son was in kindergarten, my daughter was a little bit younger. We did the L. Frank Baum books. He wrote the, um, he wrote the um, Wizard of Oz. And he wrote lots of books, not just The Wizard of Oz, but he wrote lots of books. And so we would read all those books and I would kind of use what was happening in those books for all the different subjects. Like, you know, the guy made out of straw, the guy made out of tin. So it's like, you know, what are these materials? Where do they come from? You know, things like that and mapping things like going from, and, and our theme was there's no place like home because that was like the thing that Dorothy kept saying. And so how, you know, how do you make that work for us? Um, and then we had a year on, um, Oh God, I'm blanking on these books because it's been a while. But the 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 um, you know the wardrobe. Who is that guy? Lewis. The wardrobe. Yeah. Uh, C.S. Lewis. C.S. C.S. Lewis. And again, you know, there was like five or six books in that series, right? So we would read through that, and we would try to make more more sense of it, and 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 add on to it. And then um, I did a whole year on myths. I did a whole year on mysteries. I did a whole year on biographies. I did a whole year on science fiction as they got older. Additionally, in Southern California, there's a huge homeschooling community. And so we were out in the community. It's not like we were just home. They were taking a lot of different classes. And I teamed up with a woman. I found a woman who does theater. And so my kids were in an amazing theater class for years. So it really worked out. But when my son hit high school, he was in ninth grade, you know, going into ninth grade, he was so done with me. He was just like, I, I can't do her anymore. I just I cannot do mother anymore. And I tried to keep him home or, you know, do this homeschooling. So, but it just wasn't working. So, so ninth grade, the second semester of ninth grade, we enrolled him in the local public school, which is literally down the block. He walked to school and he loved it. He had a fabulous time. He was talking about how great it was. He loved being independent. He'd walk to school. He'd do his whole thing. And when his sister heard how much fun he was having, I couldn't keep her home. So she, she went to school in eighth grade, the middle school there. And um, of course he stayed. So now he's a senior and she's in 10th grade, but they're doing great. They, you know, they're on the honor roll. They have, you know, they're doing really, really well. And I really believe that it was the homeschooling foundation that that helped them. Would they agree not, with that? Do, I think they agree with that too. They see kind of they don't. I mean, they they're concerned about their grades, and they and they get good grades, and they know that some things they have to do just to get the grade. But what's more important to them is the learning, and that's kind of what I wanted them to understand that you know, you're going to have to go through these hoops and you're going to have to do X, Y, Z to get the grades. But what's really important is, is your learning. So, so the things that they don't like to do, they just do it and hurry up and do it. And I understand that, <laughs> but, um, you know, even my son at one point was like, I, I wish we didn't have to do this for grades. I just, you know, uh, I wrote down what he said. I have the quote in, in, in the other room. It was very, enlightening but i can't remember exactly what it was but i was like this is your homeschooling this is why <laughs> so, yeah brilliant so you know everyone knows bonnie how important exercise is what would you say about that what's your um what are your thoughts about it whether it's dance or yoga or yeah, I mean, exercise is super important. And there are studies that say that of all the different exercises, dance is the number one, because not only does it get your endorphins going and all of those feel good 
uh, hormones releasing in your in your brain, but you're also using your brain for choreography. And you're and it's it's not hard on your body; it's soft on your body. And um, unlike jogging, for instance, you know, which can be pretty hard on the knees over time. I guess swimming is soft. You know, it doesn't. It, it, it's good for the body, but it's not necessarily great for the brain. Um, but yeah, I mean, exercise, of course, is good for not just your physical body and your heart and your lungs and all every tissue and muscle and limb in your body exercise is good for, but also your brain and mental health. And for dance, when you're learning choreography, you actually have to think a little bit. And so you're really getting those connections, connections going. And of course, it's so important that we are really enjoying exercise, isn't it? Because just well, doing exercise for exercise sake, um, yeah, it's not the same thing, is it? Right, exactly. That's a good point. It's fun. It's so fun. And you have music, you know, fun, beautiful music that kind of transports you. And that in and of itself is a, is a benefit and a, and a positive thing, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's so fun. And when you're having fun, you learn faster, you're more engaged, you know, again, those hormones are being released. Absolutely. So I know that your classes provide, and I'm quoting here, inspiring movement for women over 50. What made you work with women specifically? And what would you say makes your classes inspiring? What makes my class inspiring is the movement, is uh, the movement and the music. But you add a lot of grace and a lot of breath and, and the movement, my choreography works with the music and it flows. I set you up so that you're going to do the right thing. I, I Preparation, okay, preparation is good for everything, right? When you do something, you need to prepare. The more prepared you are, the easier it is, right? I mean, across the board. Same thing with dance. I set you up and I prepare you for the next thing so that you're there, you know, you have no choice but to be there. And then you're ready for the next thing and you have no choice but to be there. And, and we start, um, it's a process. So we start simple and we start easy and, and we, we start with some isolations and um, then we go into body and core work and then we go into stretches and lunges and then we do a little cardio and then we hit the floor and we do strengthening. So it's a process and, and the movement is beautiful and the music, I pick great music that you may not even hear on the radio or whatnot or some of it's kind of popular. Um, and at the end of it, you feel like you've changed a little bit. You've gone through something. You've, you've experienced something. And you feel better. And you feel more alive. And you feel stronger. And that's what people tell me. I mean, that's what people tell me. I mean, I feel it too. But um, by preparing and setting yourself up is the key. And a lot of classes that I've been to, the dance, I feel, is a little disjointed. And even with ballet, it's like, okay, we're going to stand at the bar and we're going to do all these plies. Okay, now we're going to stop doing those plies. Okay, now we're going to stand at the bar. We're going to do all these tendus. Okay, now we're going to stop doing these tendus. Okay, now we're going to stand, you know, and it's like, it doesn't flow. But with my class, we don't stop. I tell people, put your seatbelt on, buckle up, because because we're, we're not stopping. <laughs> now, of course, if you need to, to, if you're not getting anything, you know, just <laughs> take a deep breath and, and jump in when you can. But I mean, literally my playlists are about 58. Well, now that they're on Zoom, they're about 55 minutes long. The music goes, I take maybe a 30 second break here and a one minute break there and that's it. I don't stop the music. That's the other thing in other classes. Like, you know, people, I mean, 
maybe before these gadgets, it was a little bit harder when you had tapes and records and whatnot, you'd have to literally go and change the record. But even now with these things, people still do that. They play the song. Okay, now let me go find another song. And you're sitting around waiting and then they find another song and then, okay. And they play that for like, maybe not even the whole song. And then they go to the next, you know, stop. It's so disjointed. Mine, we don't stop. I put the 52 minute playlist on. I never stop. Brilliant. Well, I'm sold. I'm sold on it. You're sold. You're welcome to try it. First class free. You're welcome to try it. I'd love to have you. Bonnie, if there are women watching who really, really want to get fit, they just don't know where to start though. What might you suggest? Well, you could start with my beginning class. It's a one hour class. And it's not hardcore, like, you know, aerobics where you're going to like lose 20 pounds in a month or whatever it is. But what you are going to do is strengthen your body. You're going to add air and grace into your body and flexibility and balance and, 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 and things like that. And of course we do move in all my classes. You will build up a little bit of a sweat. I mean, some more than others, but, um, you know, if, if you're really keen on losing like a lot of weight in a short period of time, you know what you need to do. You need to run around the block 10 times, right? I mean, but, but that's not me. That's not my class. So, so this class is not about losing weight, but this class is about strengthening your body, getting, uh, getting, getting longer, right? Getting, getting leaner, getting stronger, getting more graceful having more balance, having more coordination, having more awareness of your posture, that kind of a thing. Well, who doesn't want that really? And who does, and who doesn't want that? And it's so fun because, well, you know me, Julie, I well, like to yeah, have fun. Yeah, because what you do is, it's got to be fun, isn't it? That's, that's, that's kind of who you are really. Yeah. So if people want to find out more about you, Bonnie, how would they do that? They can go to www.bonniewallacedance.com. Bonniewallacedance.com. Beautifully said. <laughs> so before we wrap up, anything else that you'd really, really like to say? Julie, it's been so fun getting to know you on Zoom across continents, across the pond. You're across the pond, but not only are you across the pond, you're also across my whole continent because I'm on the West Coast. But um, thank you for this. That's what I want to say. And it's been so nice getting to know you and I'm looking forward to more interaction with you. And, and, and thank you. Me too. Bonnie Wallace, thank you so very much. Thank you.